Hey, my name is Ash T, and on today's episodes of The Dropouts, I have Sean Levitan, who went from tech sales to Hollywood producer. So, Sean, my friend, how are you doing today? Good. I'm excited to be here. Pleasure is mine. I, oh, okay. Well, thank you for coming here. <laughs> thank you for coming here. Uh, tell me a little bit about your background. Where'd you grow up? You want to get right into it or what? Yeah, go right into it here. Like the Genesis as a kid or what career? Country? Well, that's the, my parents are immigrants, so they met in LA. Oh, where are the immigrants from? My dad's from Israel. My mom's from Denmark. Okay. They both basically fled home. They were like, I need, there's more out there for me. They fled in terror or they fled? No, just oh. like family situations. And they were like, I want to just go start fresh somewhere. Okay. And they came to LA with no money, met each other. Oh, and so I should get them on the podcast. Later. Yeah. I mean, you're going upstream, right? <laughs> I know why I'm here. <laughs> They met, they had me in LA, but none of them were citizens. So like they had to have me here so that someone could be a US citizen. And then immediately moved to Denmark for a few years. It was way too cold for my dad. Moved to Israel for a few years, too hot for my mom. And then we ended up back in San Francisco. Oh, how old were you then? I probably was like four or five by the time we came back to California. All right, lots of instability. Going so back much, and forth. like tons of culture change, languages, just like a lot of movement, family, no family. And like the whole thing kind of defined my social development and being a child, it was tough. Yeah. Yeah. What did they do as, uh, in, as work? So they, they moved back to San Francisco. They met here in LA doing valet for oh, big wow. celebrity parties, which was okay. funny. And my dad got really good at the parking game. And so then when they went back to San Francisco, he shut up, set up a parking shop or a parking company in San Francisco before the dot com. And so he was very well positioned because parking is gold up there in San yeah. Francisco. So he made money and was realizing he wasn't happy. And uh, I mean, he was always his own boss. So I think to answer your question, like I saw him grow up with a lot of freedom being his own boss, made money and then just wasn't happy and how how like uh, how old were you when you saw that he wasn't happy? That was later. That was high school years for me. So he he came up and I saw him working hard for like most of my teenage life. And then okay, so he's in the parking business early on, yeah. like when you're six years old, seven, eight, my 19, whole life, your whole life. Yeah, and my whole what, life. what is your mom doing? My mom was actually working in Silicon Valley at the time, but they had so many. Um, I have three younger brothers. It's so many kids at one point that. She stayed home and he was making enough money to support the family. So he gotcha. just did parking and she was running like a four boy operation. Okay. So when you were a kid, like when you were seven or eight, what kind of dreams did you have? What did you decide you wanted to be? I wanted mm -hmm. to be a paleontologist when I was <laughs> really young. I just, okay, I, don't, I haven't heard that at all. On yeah. This podcast, so. People don't say that. I think I like the word a lot, to be honest. And the idea of being in nature and like finding dinosaur bones, that's like a little kid dream right there. Mm -hmm. But that didn't last very long. So not, never an archaeologist. It was no. a paleontologist. Yeah. Okay. Like, got to be dinosaurs. All right. And uh, how long did that last? That was quick. <laughs> Short-lived. I don't know where it really went. I know there was a moment I wanted to be an architect. I just always had this, like, creative... Um, I wanted to be creative. Like, I needed to express my creativity. But not through acting or dancing or writing? I moved a lot. I was, like, always just running around naked. Like that was just a, that's creative, right? Like that's a form of expression. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, but never like anything like acting or dancing. Nothing in the film industry mm -mm. at this point. I always had a fascination to video, but it was kind of dormant until I like started my real career. And when did you, what did your parents say about uh, the type of career you should pursue? My parents always said, do what makes you happy. Like, oh wow. Yeah. They were super supportive. They just, I'm so lucky for that because they wanted to make sure I was good. They're realistic and they're like, you should make money because if you don't have money, you won't have stability and then you'll have a whole nother set of problems. But like do something you love, like really focus on that. And so that kind of set the guardrails for me to explore a lot of options as I grew up. So be a doctor, make money, but definitely be happy doing it. The doctor part <laughs> is more, I think, your story. <laughs> okay, yeah, true. <laughs> they were just like, just have enough money to survive. Like, what does that look like? So they, mm. you know, growing up, whatever it was, like ceramics, archery, soccer, like try as much as you can. Always trying stuff. So you tried a lot of different things yeah. growing up. And yeah. then you uh, went to college. Went to college, went to Santa Cruz for four years. Super yeah. fun. What did you decide you like there? So that's funny too, because I just, you asked me like, oh, paleontologist, then what did you want to do? There was a gap where I had no clue what I want to do for so many years. And even college, they're like, you need to declare a major. 
they mm-hmm. said, don't worry, you have two years to declare that by the end of the second year, they're like, yo, you need to pick something. And I still I didn't know, have that's anything. All of a sudden, out of nowhere. Well, it was like two years. They're <laughs> like, take your time, take your yeah. time. Like you, something will speak to you. Just take a bunch of GEs. Nothing really spoke to me. And then they were like, you literally need to decide. This what kind of classes did you take? That <sighs> Hollywood musical, like female physiology, writing stuff, a lot of history class. Just they everything. have a class called just female physiology. Yeah, female physiology. Me and my roommate took <laughs> it, and it I was. I see why you'd want to take it. You'd think it was like. <laughs> maybe 85 percent girls and then like 50 percent right. it was not what you think oh it was like pretty in-depth like graphic and yeah it sounds cooler than it was 85 percent female though that was that was a nice part <laughs> for <go>. sure <laughs> yeah and so at the end of two years you couldn't figure it out and then what happened there was a dude on my soccer team i just went to soccer practice and i was like what do you guys all declare as like what do you study and one dude said i'm environmental studies good for the world (laughs) and i figured if i'm gonna do something i might as well do something that's good for the world so i committed to that and that was great but then by the end of two years of that it just was like a pretty depressing thing to study every professor felt like they were like yo we're kind of doomed so write a report on that and it was Uh, like god another one like is there no hope maybe if the professors were a little bit more positive about it you might have enjoyed it some of them were charming it just i think we're actually not in a great place Mm. and so it was a pretty uphill battle but i just realized like i want to spread love and positivity and i could do that another way and so i i veered away from that after i graduated okay so you graduate you have a degree in environmental sciences yeah and then what do you decide to do? I was like, I need to travel for as long as I can. <laughs> to just, figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, because you got to go through. If you don't know what you want to do in life, then the next thing is just to like expand that time yeah. so that you can figure out what you want to do. So yeah. it's travel for you. Tons of travel, a lot of different countries, cultures, good food, just like talking to people out in the world and kind of like letting my spirit reset a little bit after, I don't know, 16, 20 years of school. And it got to the point where I could feel like I was burned out. Like I was... You were burned out from traveling? Yeah. Like I was like... How did you make money while you're traveling? I had money. So I worked in my dad's parking lots. Mm. Like it was a good way to make money, but not be super tied up. So I'd make money, travel, make money, travel. And it got to a point where most of my friends had legit jobs in like the corporate scene and were starting to progress. And it actually felt like an exciting opportunity to try to do that instead of... I felt some anxiety before, some resistance. I was running from it. But all of a sudden, I was like, okay, I think it's time. I'm ready to, I want to, I want to challenge myself and see what that looks like. Could you say it might have been even jealousy just seeing like what other people were doing or like, man, they have stable lives? Jealousy, but also that age, I just think you're so like unsure of the world. So a little insecurity and fear about falling behind. Okay. Right. And I, and I put that off because I didn't want that to be the driver. But after a while, I was like, how long can you travel? Like there is going to be a moment where it's not fear-based. Like it's actually genuinely coming from a place of interest. So I reached that spot and then I was like, I jumped in. And what, uh, what type of job did you take? Silicon Valley tech sales, just all tech. Up How'd you there. get into that? All my friends were there. Oh, and so okay. all those companies give you massive referral bonuses. If you get them a good employee that lasts for, I think like three months, six months, they'll give you like a couple thousand dollar kickback. Wow. Yeah. So I was like, yo, who wants, who wants a kickback? Like, (laughs) let's go. So Mm. you met all your friends again in uh, tech sales. I, I jumped in, like they were all doing it and I joined one of the companies. It was awesome. And I learned so much, kind of proved to myself I could do it. The first company I worked for, um, lost funding, like, I don't know, half a year in and laid off 40% of their workforce Mm. one morning. Just a mass firing. It was crazy. But not you. No, I was one of the first to leave. I was like, you know, they were like, when did you get hired? You're done. And sales too. Like if you're hurting for money, you're going to let go a lot of the sales team. Um, And that was the first time I realized like my fate is not in my own hands here. Mm. Like I don't have control over my destiny. You have a stable job. It seems like it was a stable job, yeah. but then it turns out it wasn't. Yeah. Startup life is not as stable. Boom. As done. Yeah. But I, I bounced back fast and I got another tech job for a few years. And then I just was like miserable. I was 25 and having like a midlife crisis and just not I was driving to work every day. And I was like, there's no way money was good. And I was excelling, but 
it just felt limiting. Like you do really well and say, all right, like I'm ready for the next challenge. And they're like, oh, 18 months, 24 more months of this. Like put your head down and you'll, you'll move up the ladder. What that? did you like about this, the past job that you didn't like about this job? Like you did like the first job you had that you got laid off of, right? They were both the same. I, I enjoyed them. It's like sales. You talk to a lot of people. I like connecting with people. That's something that complements my skill set. There's also like, I love being in an office with a bunch of people. I love culture, company culture. So that was fun. And just like being in a social environment was great. I do well with accountability from the outside. So like sales is gamified. They would have your name on the board depending on how well you did. And I was like, okay, perfect. I'm going to get my name to the top. Like that's exciting to me. I'll get a lot of, mm. you know, credibility there. And it's just, it was fun. Like, but the second job was not as fun. It was fun too. But I, after a while, that stuff starts to lose its shine. Cause I just felt that I wasn't being challenged anymore. How long was it into the job that you felt like that? Probably like a year. I mean, mm -hmm. how long can you cold call for? And then you move up and you do account managing and like you see the trajectory and then you're a manager and then you're a director. I remember the day I quit, I was already kind of like burned out. I was upset and frustrated by how slow the progression was up the ladder. Even when you're good, it's like so-and-so got here first. So, you know, after them, you're going to be up. And I was like, that was hard for me, but my manager was like, keep going. And one day you'll sit at that table with the rest of those people and point it to like the execs and the people I saw there, I did not want to be, <laughs> I quit that day. I was like two weeks, like I'm good. Whatever you guys Why? need. Were they not model citizens or what? what it did just, you not like it? I don't know. There was like a look in their eyes. Mm. I, a lot of them were just like overweight. They spent most of their day sitting down inside just I don't know. They didn't feel like thriving humans, like drank a lot. I just, their eyes looked sad. <laughs> and I was like, and I would ask them deep questions about life too. When we would have our meetings or like when you get conversations with them, like, you know, where do you, what do you think about life? So, some, some of like these big picture, more philosophical questions and their answers. I was like, I don't think I'm in the right place. Yeah. You know, I don't want to, that's not where I want to head. Did you ever talk to your parents about all this stuff? Oh, for sure. I was like, nightly yo do i quit <laughs> like mm. how how do you know it's time and yeah. you know they gave me good advice there make sure that you're not just like running away from something or that you have a plan but i held on too long that was one of my regrets is i probably should have been a little cleaner on the way out but i like tried to keep it together until it just imploded well maybe if your parents hadn't said you know just uh just question you <laughs> leaving you maybe left earlier right yeah true <laughs> i also <laughs> I'm kind of a people pleaser yeah. less than I used to be. But back then it was hard to like let people down and mm. I felt close to a lot of people there. So I knew leaving wasn't going to be like, that wasn't going to make people happy. Right. So that was like some inner work that I had to clean up after that. Yeah, totally. So how long were you with that company? Did you say two years? Yeah, a couple of years. And that was, that was when my life changed. I like just took a leap of faith and moved to San Diego and started full blown like creative work video and like that's but, but hang on a second how did you know you could do creative work like how did that interest even come about i had always been thinking about it for a while I, we had so me and my brother had dabbled in videos for years but like really just vacations and free time stuff nothing serious oh okay yeah let's go back to that okay. how long have you been dabbling in video though? it wasn't long it was maybe a few years with gopros and like no mm -hmm. nice equipment or anything like that but he was taking video editing classes in high school and he was getting good at that. And I like to film. So we made a good team and we would just like, if we go out in the city for, you know, a parade or something, like we would document it. And, you know, it wasn't anything crazy, but I got a taste of what creating videos was. And I had never felt that feeling before. Ah, yeah. And did, at, w at the time when you were working with your brother on these side projects, did you ever get paid for it? No, never got close. paid. You just uh, enjoyed doing it. Yeah, you just knew that. Yeah, purely passion at that point. Did you ever feel like that was something that you could make money from? Did it ever occur to you to be like, hmm, this Not is that. really fun. I wish I could make some money off yeah. this. Yeah, I mean, the dream was to be an influencer, YouTuber, like whatever it was those days. But I didn't really think about it as like, oh, I need to make money from this. It was more like, I would love to just document more and create more. It wasn't tied to money. Then I moved to San Diego and I worked at a video production house and I was doing sales for them. 
And I started to realize oh, okay. so that you're using your tools from the past yeah, to do something else. That was my way in. I see. I went okay. in there and I was like, yo, let can I do sales for you to be around this sort of stuff? And they were super down. And as I researched, like social media was leaving behind photos and going way more to videos. I could tell videos was about to blow up. Like, mm. This was a direction for sure. And so I was like, okay, something's here. That that's the first time I was like, there's something here. And I started making videos myself every week just because I couldn't sleep at night if I didn't do it. I would like wake up and be like, you need to take baby steps towards your dream. So like just start making videos. Did you like sales at the video place that you were at? Did you like that job? It was also pretty intense because it was cold calling. I like sales when it's person to person and it's like more intimate, but the just pick up the phone and smash cold calls kills me. All right. So it was also not a, a job that you enjoyed, but you were finally with your brother making videos now. Brother wasn't in the scene. That was, uh, he was still like in high school back up north. But I, I will say that doing tech sales was tough because you're cold calling for something you don't really believe in. Mm -hmm. But doing it for video, I could get behind because I, gotcha. I actually really enjoyed making videos and seeing productions go live. So that side made the sales okay. And uh, so this goes back to your childhood dream of loving video stuff. Yeah, for you sure. Knew that there was something there. I just like, there was very little to grab onto at that point in my life, but that was, it's like one of those corny moments where you could just feel something and you're like, I don't know how to describe it, but there's something there yeah. in that direction. So I'm just going to like blindly walk there. Yeah. And uh, you kept your sales job while you're making this, the videos or was there a point where you said, I think I want to do videos full time. I did. Uh, I stayed there for a while. The company got like a little rocky and I was just making my own videos and I had done it. I called it project 52 and I was like, I'm going to make a video a week. Just like any, doesn't have to be any theme, just a video a week. And it goes, what year was this 2017 maybe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 2017. That's about the time when they were saying a video a week every week. Yeah. <laughs> on some Gary V hype, right? Like yeah. I was just trying to understand the content game, but I knew like I needed reps. So I was like, make a video a week. And I made a message. That was Facebook days. So I posted it on Facebook and I was like, hold me accountable every Sunday. I'm posting a new video. Mm. And I did for weeks. And then I kind of became the video guy. So people would call me with video questions and like small video projects. And you I, became the video guy at the company or like no, in like the, in my in network. Uh, no, okay. just in my network, like social media. Yeah. Just, and I'm international because of my parents, like Denmark, Israel, California. So I kind of had like people all over the world that were starting to follow my little mm. vlog mission. And it landed a few small gigs, like one offs, come film this event, come do this, come do that. And then it so got just your work, your quality of work on your vlog. Yeah. Helped you get some jobs. I just think if you make enough noise doing something that you want to do more of, like people will recognize that. And if you have good intentions, they'll try to help you. And they did. And they did. Like, I think I'm a likable person. People resonate wow. with my, me <laughs> my words, not yours. <laughs> and they, they, people helped me and they were like, yo, I want to see you win and you know, thrive. So here's an opportunity. I know you like video. Landed me a full time gig, and then that was cool. It was like, um, that's cool. So people see that you're making good work. This they said, hey, I like your video, and yeah. uh, I want to help you out. Yeah, I mean, you need the support from your people. Like, yeah, there's no way around that. Um, and so yeah, that kind of snowballed into like a full time creative role. I was like the in house videographer, and I slowly made my way up to creative director at this startup wellness clinic in San Diego. Wait, so okay. You were a salesperson at a video company, right? At a production house, yeah. And then you're at the same company or somewhere else when you're going into this full-time work? Somewhere else. Because I was freelancing. Oh, this? Yeah, I was freelancing a little bit and like the money wasn't what I needed. So I actually quit and got like a service industry job. I was working oh. at a restaurant and that was a, that was my, those were my darkest days. I was cleaning urinals at the end of <laughs> shifts. And I remember thinking like, if you don't go home and edit tonight, then you're going to have to keep cleaning urinals. Interesting. And like, I have a college degree. My yeah, dad was like, like, why didn't you go back to sales? Why? Because did you I just knew now? like I needed a fire under me. Uh, you know what I mean? Like my dad was like, what are you doing? You like, I paid, I was like, my parents paid for my college. They're like, we paid for you to not have to do that. And I was like, I don't know. I just feel like there's something humbling about this. And my dad was like, all right, I agree. And so like I would work the restaurant and then like we'd close up shop. I'd be cleaning urinals get home and I'd have to edit till 3 a.m. Cause I was like, do you want to keep cleaning urinals or not? Yeah. And I got enough reps in where like 
I got the job offer so I could leave the restaurant and go full time and make money doing the creative stuff. And that was like the, like, oh, finally. Oh, uh, when did that happen? Because it's, it's pretty rare that, you know, people realize they make money out of a creative field, right? So well, I had seen enough you... freelance things come in, like the one-off projects. And then one company kept coming back. And I was like, can you guys just take me on? Uh, like it was like $500 for the first video. And then the next month, like 750 And then the next month, they're like, we'll give you 1000 And I was like, yeah, you just want to like have all my time and give me enough to pay rent and make food? And they were like, yeah, let's go. Oh, wow. Yeah. Fascinating because you're just here making videos on the side, freelancing, and eventually someone enjoys the work that you're putting out mm -hmm. and offers you that job. Yeah. Or you actually ask them. So doesn't matter who asked. <laughs> but that was exciting for me because I realized, okay, I'm getting paid. My life is being supported by my creative work. Yeah. That was a cool moment. I was like, all right, let's go. So you want me to keep going? Yeah, keep going. <laughs> I made, I kept going with that sort of stuff while I was freelancing on the side. And I think like my next moment was when I... I started like an e-commerce brand, a stillness brand, and I just loved making content for it. And it was about meditation and mindfulness. And I quit that creative job to go full, uh, full time on my own, like e-commerce brand. Oh. And that was tough because it was during COVID and that was the worst time to run a, like a production. Because why, why did you quit the job? I thought you enjoyed creative work. I was kind of tapped out at the, I mean, why did I quit? I was doing that for a few years. It kind of felt like I had learned enough there. And I was also taking on a lot of freelance work. And I landed a few pretty big freelance corporate clients that were affording my life. So I could let go of the full time. I wanted more time back. And I had money coming from like big freelance clients. And oh, so you're freelancing on the side. That company allows you to freelance on the side. Yeah, it got sticky. They were like, because uh, they couldn't pay me what I wanted. So they were like, why don't you use the extra time to freelance? And I prefer that anyway, because it yeah. kind of adds some diversity to my workflow. So I did that for a while, but then they got bigger. They wanted more of my time. My freelance work got bigger. And I kind of had to make a decision like, which one's it going to be? And the freelance gave me good money and more time. And I'd always had this pipe dream about starting an e-commerce like clothing line, stillness line. And so I was like, I think this is my moment. Like I'm going to, I'm going to jump again and roll the dice another time. This one didn't go as planned. <laughs> it's just tough during COVID yeah. to like have a supply chain. It was a nightmare. Um, I love the creative side though, like branding a company. So making content, like we had tons of content going out. That was the most fun part. Um, but fast forward, I had to come to terms like that's not going to work. The e-commerce brand isn't going to work. I need to like really go all in on my creative like endeavors again. Yeah. There's something here, but I was at band with like one person, a one man shop. You can only do so much. Yeah. And I started to identify like the bottlenecks where I'm like oh, one big project and it puts me out the game. I can't take more work. Mm -hmm. And so I had a creative mentor here in Venice that has been helping me for a few years and I moved to LA, we met up, I told him, I was like, I'm trying to do more of this creative stuff. Here's my bottlenecks. Now, when you say creative stuff, what did you want to do specifically? It's funny because I didn't know really. I just thought like I wanted to film and edit and make videos more, mm. but I could also feel like it was a little forced. It's strange to think, but that was the area that I like to play in, like the content space. But video and photo or video and like editing, something wasn't like adding up there. I just didn't, I was like, maybe I just need more reps and I'm not good enough yet. Like, I don't know what it is, but I, I feel like there's a friction there. And when, when I, I ended up partnering up with him, he has his own agency in Venice and he was like, we need someone like you to run operations and do all that stuff. And he's kind of the creative director. He's like a Don Draper. He's a genius. So just seeing him work, I was super stoked on that. But I realized when we came together, I like the more like operations, like, I don't know if you call it admin side of stuff. I like that, but I also like the creative stuff. So it gave me a nice balance of like doing the accounting and the books and like managing the budgets and the talents and like the locations of shoots and the client facing stuff. But also like when we're short, I'll shoot and edit and it gave me everything. And, and I wasn't alone either. I had him. And that's the first time that I've really like had someone else in an adventure or in a venture, in a business venture with me. Mm, gotcha. 
Yeah. All right. So it's all stepwise. Everything is kind of other than, you know, just quitting the job as a salesperson yeah. to clean urinals. That was the, <laughs> that was kind of the breaking point for yeah. you. But pretty much after that, you're, you're taking baby steps. Like you make money in X, Y, and Z. And then, all right, next time, next thing you know, you're doing creative stuff. And then when that gets, you're just adjusting and pivoting basically so much because I think that was like, if there's a takeaway that I could give on this episode. It's how much like feedback I'd have to get from my life. Like, okay, I'm making money, but I'm not happy with how I'm making it. So I need to change that. And then I was like, okay, now I'm making no money, but I'm happy with what I'm doing for work. So then I got to balance that. So then I would be like doing some freelance stuff but some like some work for me, some work for them. And then you're like kind of balancing it the whole time. Um, and I would say you can't jump without like covering your bases. Some people can, I couldn't like to go you wanted to plan B or just like you need some stability. Yeah. For me, it's hard to be creative if I don't have my bases covered. Cause then I'm just worried about like, where's the next meal coming from? Right. And like, am I going to be good? I need stability so I can feel like safe and then create. And I think everyone has a different relationship there, but it's important to just bring awareness to that. Yeah. I mean, some people that I have like to be, you know, they like to have their back against the wall and yeah. figure it out. But I'm, I'm like you, I like to have all my bases covered yeah. before I can be really creative. Yeah. Like some yeah. people say burn the ships at bay because you're not going back. Yeah. And I see the potency of that, but I'm just like, that's not me. Yeah. I need like, I need a ship on this side of the island and on this side of the island. Like I want ships everywhere because <laughs> I, I need to go where I want to go. <laughs> yeah. So if you were to look back in time, would you have changed anything that you did or did you feel like it kind of made you the person you are? I would have done everything the same. I think I would have worried less. Mm. Just been a little less anxious about it. It's fun. Like, and because of that, I look forward and even when things get rocky, I'm able to enjoy it a little more. Cause I'm like, you're so going to be if fine. You, yeah. If you could go back in time, you'd be like, Hey, whatever you do, you're going to be fine. Don't underestimate yourself. Yeah. Is that, am I leading this question on? Yeah. It's, I mean, it's <laughs> like, just have more fun with it. Like, you know, you're going to do just fine. So like, enjoy it. And I always wonder if that's going to undermine like ambition. Cause a lot of people say that that stress drives them to be more productive. But I just think that's a short term play because that will, for me, it led to burnout every time. Mm. And so it was more important to realize, like, how can I be as productive as I need to without the driver being like fear and that sort of stuff? Like, can I insert healthier motives there? And then once I started doing that, my energy was so much better sustained. Mm -hmm. So do you have uh, any advice for anyone that is like, I don't think I like this corporate job anymore. I want to be a creative yeah, I think. What do you think they should do? I mean, right now, like the gig economy is exploding. And I think it's because a lot of people, they want more freedom in their life. And they're looking for something that aligns more with what they love to do, passions and such. But I think it's also really important to, I mean, this goes back to our last point, but you got to survive before you can thrive. Like you really need to get your bases down. And I feel like if you, there is something, like if you're not happy at work, then that's a, that's what good starting point, but figure out what it is you want to do while you have the stability, like use your free time and know that like, you don't need to change right now, but if you start to put stuff into play, like it will end in a place that you'd rather be. And so like slowly searching for that. I mean, yeah, slowly adjusting and pivoting. Yeah, exactly. Cause I just think we're so rash humans. Like as soon as we feel relief, we'll jump at that's like sometimes fleeting. Hmm. It's an illusion. So you want to like go have a few highs and lows with that dream life of yours. And then if it survives, okay, maybe there's something there. All right. All right. Any other words of wisdom you want to share? Slow down. I think we move too fast. Like I get that you have to do a lot in this world, but I think if you can slow down and really like take your time, chew on things our subconscious mind is so powerful so like if we just let it work in the background it gives us a lot of answers we don't always have to be like forcing solutions just like pull back space between the spokes just let that time work its magic and slow down more i think that will lead to uh just a more happy peaceful life for everyone i think so too i mean i remember you know, I would do a calculus question and I would want to get the answer right there, you know, but I couldn't, I'd have to sleep on it. Yeah. And the next morning I would come up with the answer. So, Boom. 
Yeah. It's Slow down. Fresh eyes, fresh mind. Like mm-hmm. it's crazy what it'll do. All right. Well, uh, it was really awesome having you on this episode, Sean. Um, I always say I believe in you and you should believe in yourself.